A very good evening and welcome to Markets Today on CNBC TV 18. I'm Ekta Batra and with me is Surbhi. Surbhi, it turned out to be quite a heavy week in terms of news. We had the RBI policy. We ended the week with uh, earnings galore. Absolutely, lots happening and several of those big ticket numbers coming in today as well. We're going to be talking about all that and the fact that the bulls have finally have to give up their grip on the last Street at least today. But first, let's start with the headlines. Bulls lose their grip on the Lal Street as caution prevails around earnings and the U.S. jobs report. The Nifty ends at 85.60 with a cut of 0.3%. The Sensex cools off by 61 points. Banks and infrastructure stocks see pressure, but oil and gas blue chips stay in the green. Well, a day of big earnings. BHL shocks this street by reporting a profit of just 34 crores for the quarter. The company reports a loss at the EBITDA level. Top line falls 16% as execution remains weak. The stock ends down 6%. Tata Motors misses the mark on most counts with profit and total income falling more than anticipated. Margins come in line but JLR revenue at 5 billion pounds is below expectations. The company also reports a forex loss of 107 crore rupees. M&M delivers a strong performance with profit and margins beating expectations. However, the management's subdued commentary on the outlook for the tractor business triggers profit booking. The stock ends down half a percent. The mid-cap index sees a marginal loss as focus remains on earnings. Selling persists on JP Infra, Bombay Dying and Monte Carlo fashions on weak results. Mother Sumi falls another 6% after CLSA downgrades the stock. Phenolix Industries and Minda Corporation gain 4 and 16% on good results. All right, well, those were the headlines at this hour. But let's also tell you the experts that we have lined up on the show for you. Ramdeer Agarwal of Mutilalo Swell Financial Services. Prabhat Vasti of Namura will join in with their take on the markets. And we'll also get you the managements of M&M as well as Tata Motors to talk about their quarterly performance. All right, straight up to all the market action of the day. It's been a muted end to another good week for the markets overall. Both the Nifty and the Sensex have ended the week with a gain of just about half a percent or so. It's been all about the oil and gas stocks today with sharp fall in crude prices aiding both upstream and downstream companies. So be it ONGC, BPCL, HPCL, they were all up and about in today's action. Anuj Singhal is standing by with all the details. Anuj, bulls finally taking a bit of a breather on the last day of the week. Yeah, it was a bit of a Friday factor playing out clearly. There was a bit of profit booking ahead of weekend. There's an important data also to be released in the US, uh, the jobs data that is. And, you know, you saw a bit of profit booking. But the theme again was crude and companies using crude as raw material. Really, the big search continued in that space. Uh, PSU banks corrected today. That was uh, the other interesting theme of the, of the day. And select mid caps also saw some profit booking. But let's talk about the stocks that really you know, but take was seeing a big uptick in trade today, and that was the oil marketing companies. In fact, not just oil marketing companies; overall oil sector was on a tear today. ONGC was up about four percent, BPCL was up two percent, but the real big stunner was HPCL. That stock was up about seven percent. In terms of nifty gainers, you had Tata Motors. Uh, the numbers came after market hours, so it will be interesting to see what happens on Monday. But uh, the stock was up 3%, Vedanta was up 2%, and Infosys was up 1%. On the losing side, BHL was your top loser, though it's telling you half the story. At one point, it was down 11%. It finally recovered to close 5.5% down. Coal India was down about 3.5%, and Bajaj Auto was down about 1.5%. And as I said, today was a day of profit booking in PSU banks. So stocks like SBI, PNB, Bank of Baroda were all lower by about 2%. In the mid caps, now the, the, the rally is extending now, is stretching on to the micro caps and small caps. Take a look at the top gainers today. You had stocks like GHCL, Merck Electronics, Kesoram, all of them up between 18 to 20%. So you would tend to get a bit worried now. And in terms of losers, you had some stocks uh, uh, correcting quite a bit after the recent run-up, like Mothers and Somi, that was down about 6%. Punj Lloyd was down 4%, and Union Bank was down about 3%. The sense you get is that the Nifty has been now stuck in this trading range for far too long, and next week maybe a breakdown or breakout is imminent. So it's going to be an interesting week. 
Okay, all right, Anuj. Thanks very much for that. Let's get in some expert opinion now from market watchers at Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Ramdev Agarwal, the joint MD, says signs of an earnings as well as economic recovery are already visible. But Tahir Badshah, the senior VP and head fund manager, says growth is significantly less than what the valuations today are calling out for. I'm really. Uh, uh uh, surprised by the extent of uh, margin expansion because of the collapse of the commodity prices in oil and other a uh, lot of uh, soft commodity, hard commodities which have fallen and uh, the pricing power has been fully used by the companies on a 12-13% kind of business you go to 18% it's like a 50% expansion on it, then you don't care whether top line is growing or not you know so that's a kind of uh, sub and it is not the lowest oil price still uh, I mean after the results yeah, uh, they've they fallen further so I think uh, for next two three quarters September December I think for the whole year I think this segment will is uh, really going to do very well we have done a little bit of rationalization where we felt that the growth is significantly less than what the valuations are actually calling out today for. Uh, but then there have been many others, uh, despite the run and probably despite uh, you know stretch valuations in the near term, have a lot of headroom for growth. If there's a stock, let's say, at 50 p, and uh, probably it is still uh, good enough for a growth of around 30-40 percent, uh, at least visible growth over the next uh, seven to eight quarters, uh, then that's something which is reasonably, we know that there could be a downside, we could probably see 5-10% come off, but we know that the underlying growth is supportive of higher valuations in general. Uh, but if there is a dichotomy to the extent that there is a stock which is trading at 90p and probably growth is more like 10%, then that's something which is going a little over the top. So there you would probably feel the need to rationalize and maybe you know try and see if you can correct that position. Okay, those are some views. Now let's move on to the numbers. Automator Mahindra and Mahindra reported first quarter earnings today. Net profit fell 7% year on year to 831 crore rupees. Expectations were for a 17% drop. For more details, let's go across to Farah Bukwala Vora, who's been going through the numbers. Farah, the market was initially quite happy looking at the beat that we got on the operational level, but then there was some profit booking. Take us through the key highlights for the quarter. Well, m and has shown real resilience even in the face of a very challenging environment, posting a good set of numbers in the first quarter, which has pleased the street, especially because of an improved profitability scenario. Now, on the net sales front, and this is for the consolidated performance, that is m and plus MVML, net sales have fallen by 5%, coming at 9,437 crore rupees. This is below what the street was estimating, as the farm equipment sector has been a real drag in this quarter, owing to uncertainty over uh, over the over delayed monsoons and uncertainty over a good Kharif crop. However, on the EBITDA front, the company has posted a figure of 1,353 crore rupees, which is a decline of 5%, much better than what the street was expecting, as uh, the company has been helped by new launches adding traction, commodity cost remaining benign, and robust cost-cutting measures that have been implemented. Operating margins have come in at 14.3%. This is flat, but is far a real positive surprise given that the street was expecting a contraction of 177 basis points. Net profit has been stellar, coming in at 831 crore rupees versus 896 crore rupees. This is 14% ahead of uh, the CNBC TV18 uh, estimates. Now, in the farm equipment sector, as I already pointed out, rural sentiments continue to remain very subdued and uh, revenue, therefore, was down 9%. Remember that in this quarter, volumes were down 16% on a year-on-year basis. Margins remain flat, growing marginally by 0.8%. Uh, in the auto space, revenue is down 2% as it continues to be under pressure. Uh, profits down 3% and margins came in flat at 10.3%. With that, it's back to you. A lot of the commodity price increase is always passed on with the selling price. Okay? Now, this quarter, for example, when we didn't have a commodity price increase, uh, we took no price increase in tractor. We took only half a percent price increase in automotive. Right? If commodity prices were higher, we would have probably taken a more aggressive uh, price increase also. But the other thing that is in our, uh, in our favor right now that uh, us, like many other auto companies, are running our plants under capacity. And therefore, when new volume comes in, uh, that will clearly help us to spread our fixed cost on a larger volume, and that will also help on margin. 
Okay, well, that's quite a cautious management of M&M there. But the other auto major, which came out with its first quarter numbers, was Starter Motors, who failed to meet street expectations, with the company's profits falling uh, quite significantly this quarter by almost 48.7%. So the total income also was down around 6 or percent. The GLR total margins also were a tad below expectations. But uh, on that note, let's listen in to what the management of Tata Motors had to say. Going forward in commercial vehicles, the medium and heavy commercial vehicle growth is expected to be more comprehensive and sustainable in this year. We expect the small commercial vehicle will reflect growth maybe at the end of the fiscal or maybe into the next year. The JN, JN and URM phase two orders will help support bus volume growth. It's an important year for Jaguar Land Rover. The model pipeline and the changeover combined with uh, the China JV startup of production and the ramp up. We said EBITDA margins will continue to be, remain uh, challenged in this uh, financial year. So a lot depends on how well uh, the ramp up happens, how well the market uh, starts behaving and accepting the new products. Well, one company that had no such luck with numbers was BHL, the capital goods manufacturer, posted what was really a shocker in the first quarter. Uh, not surprisingly, the stock tanked as much as 8% after results came out. Well, thank you so much. You know, we all knew that quarter one for BHL, you know, is the weakest if you had to watch it for entire four quarters, but not horrible. You know, the company reported really horrible set of numbers. Top line disappointment clearly coming from Bhel. Uh, look at these numbers for quarter one. Net sales were down 15.5 percent at nearly 4,280 crores. CNBC TV 18 poll suggested that there could be a growth of nearly 2 percent in terms of sales, but it declined nearly 15.5 percent. Net profit was down 82 percent at only 34 crores for the company, and CNBC TV 18 poll was suggesting that the profits could actually increase by 12 percent. So you can imagine, you know, the company reported profit only because of uh, you know the higher other income had. There, there was no other income the company could have reported loss. The other income reported by the company was nearly 492 crores for the quarter compared to 347 crores last year. And actually, on an operational front, the company reported an EBITDA loss of nearly 209 crores. And what led to this, you know, horrible set of numbers, it was clearly power segment. Look at the power segment. Sales were down 19%. Power segment EBIT was down 60%. And power segment EBIT margin came at only 6% compared to 12.7%. So clearly, you know, the stock went down 10%. Actually, it recovered, you know, nearly 5% from day's low. But we have to see how the brokerages take away. There were a few of them, including CLSA, who upgraded the stock in the last uh, one or two months. Have to see now what they say about what happened to Bhel. But clearly, if you are looking at only numbers, it was a top-line disappointment. Well, disappointment is a bit of a mild word for BHL. It was a complete shocker in terms of numbers this quarter. But Canra Bank, which announced a dismal set of numbers this week, is now trying to set things right as far as recovery of dues are concerned. Uh, the bank has managed to recover about 1,000 crores last quarter and is now looking to raise another 500 crores within the next month itself. Manasvi Gilani joins in with more details on Canra Bank and their plans in terms of recoveries. Canada Bank is looking to mop up 500 crore rupees and this is only from the recovery mechanism that they have in place this time which is e-auction of properties. Uh, you know they have set aside 2500 properties which are which can be auctioned under the Surface Act. They've identified them and they are across the country in both categories residential and commercial. Uh, now the bank is emphasizing on asset quality like all other banks are. Uh, you know yes uh, their NPAs uh, both gross and net increased marginally by about 9 basis points in the first quarter uh, but their uh, recovery has been intact. In fact, they recovered about 1,056 crore in the first quarter now and they have set aside a target of about 6,000 crore under recovery through the financial year 16. So for quarter two, uh, this they are expecting to recover about 500 crore rupees of dues and they want this to re reflect in their quarter two results. Hence, this auction is scheduled in September, about 22nd of September is when they are looking to do this. Now, this has been a trend. In fact, it started with SBI doing this. So this, how far it goes through uh, is, uh, you know, they could probably mop up more than this, but 500 crore rupees is their target at this point in time. All right, Manasvi, thanks so much for that. Well, Manish Santhalia, Senior VP and Head Equities PMS at Motilal Oswal Asset Management, says the worst isn't exactly over for PSU banks.
is it the end of the stress that is the moot question you know uh, you know the government has announced that 70000 crores would be infused over a period of next 4 5 years but is the problem not much more than what uh, you know this 70000 crore would do of course it would alleviate a bit of the position uh, the stress position but size of the npa is just too big you know and uh, you know within the psu banks you know a lot of npas according to me is still hiding within the restructuring team Okay, well, the monetary policy making looks set to move from the current system of governor as sole decision maker to a committee way of policy making. Former RBI governor D. Subbaraj spoke to Lata Venkatesh on what one should be aware of while designing the new system. What what's going to be the composition of the MPC, and whether or not the governor will have a veto? I think those two issues are going to determine what value and how much value. uh the monetary policy committee is going to add to uh, decision making it's very important uh that the governor who is ultimately responsible for delivering on the inflation target keeping of course uh in view the objective of growth uh should have a decisive say so in my view to coming back to your question i thought about mr tedabram's formulation and i think it looks very balanced uh three from the inside the reserve bank three from outside appointed by the government and the governor having a casting vote so it's not of course a veto but for all practical purposes uh it gives the governor a veto Oh, that's a former RBI governor on exactly how the monetary policy committee composition should look like. Time for a break, but coming up on the other side, more market perspective from Prabhat Avasti of Namura. We'll also tell you about stocks that were moving around on the street today.